motorcycle is whatever you want to make it. Turn it on, you can give yourself a real thrill. What's going on guys? This is Carl, the Red Channel. Wanted to do kind of a five things you should consider before you purchase a KTM 450 XCF, which is what I'm riding right now. This particular one is geared with the stock rear sprocket, but it has a 12 tooth front sprocket, which is one down from stock. And I find that that has really helped. This is my first ride on it this way, and it still does well over 70 for top speed. And yet, it crawls really well through the rocky stuff. So this bike is uh, is made for cross country, um, hence the XC. But it's still a four-stroke, and although it is trail-worthy, it's not going to be a 300 two-stroke in terms of to do single track this bike is still going to have a tendency to flame out if you're not careful and it's really just because it's a four stroke that, that doesn't mean it's not good at doing trails um, I haven't flamed this bike out for a couple rides now and it does really well on single track but still it will flame out easier than a two stroke so that's just something to be mindful of with any four stroke and like I said I have this geared down one tooth that's something that you can do to counteract that aspect of the bike and two the bike will have a ton of torque ton of power all the way through the rev range but it will feel heavier than just about any two stroke even though this bike weighs pretty much the same as the two-stroke models, it will feel a lot heavier due to the fact that it has a bigger engine, a lot more going on in the engine, and that centrifugal motion makes it feel heavy. And when you're in single track and stuff like that, it really in the hard situations it feels like it really does and you can when you grab onto this bike to lift it up you feel a light bike but when you're riding it and using the engine just the characteristics of that engine makes it feel heavier than uh, any two-stroke will bike has a five-speed transmission unlike the 350 cc model and that almost made me buy the 350 as I talked about in another video because the five-speed is okay it's a heck of a lot better than the four-speed but it ain't no six-speed when it comes to single track you can't really beat the six-speed Basically what this bike feels like with the current gearing is a six-speed transmission, but it would be missing the sixth gear because I've made first gear really low so that it can just crawl through stuff. But when you're out on the dirt roads, you shift up to the fifth, it does wind out a little bit. So be uh, aware of that, that this bike is a five-speed. That's three things you should know about. The 2017 model of this bike has an air fork. Be aware of that and just know that it's got its own setup. And I'm sure if you're looking at these bikes, you're already aware of that. So anyways, yeah, this bike has an air fork. 
and if it runs all the way out of air it won't decompress or do anything like that but it'll get really soft and blow through easier but it will still semi work and I don't prefer the air fork over conventional forks but um, I feel that these are a little bit harsh high in the stroke however it's not to the point where it makes me dislike the bike any it's just a little bit different there's a different feel to it so I wouldn't say that's a negative or a positive it's just one of those things that you have to be aware of but yeah just know that if you get the 2017 model of this bike it will have the air fork and I don't know when they did away with the air fork. I haven't really researched the newer models just because I haven't had any reason to. They haven't been on my radar. But you can do a conversion kit, which I've considered doing on this bike. And MX Tech makes a uh, coil spring conversion that is supposedly really legit. So something to consider for sure Another thing to keep in mind is this bike does not have a Kickstarter, and most four strokes don't. I don't know that any four strokes do anymore now that I'm thinking about this. They did away with the Kickstarters. Which I don't like. So, if you do hard enduro with this bike, you're constantly killing the bike and starting it. Ooh. Then, you will have a dead battery and your SOL. gone smoother got a little bit caught up in some rocks there get out of my face dude good god didn't go nearly as smooth as I would have liked. Granted those boulders are bigger than they appear on camera, but that bush that stuck me in the face didn't help me out any. you need to know about this bike and granted the Kickstarter one is not bike specific too much but I really do prefer a Kickstarter on this and here's the really bad thing 
this bike does not have an option for a Kickstarter. As you will see, there is no spot for the Kickstarter. So, if you want, an, if you want a Kickstarter, you're kind of SOL. That's what's a little bit different about this bike when you compare it to others, is that most bikes have a spot to put a Kickstarter if you so wish, or if you so choose, but this bike is like, nah, I don't need that crap. But uh, super impressed with this bike right now. It's, it's just a torque monster and it's lightweight, very manageable bike. And it's just a pleasure to ride. Makes 62 horsepower, which is an unbelievable number. And uh, you can definitely feel that this bike makes the two strokes feel like toys when you get on it and then you go back to the two strokes they just feel so docile in the low rpm range up on top you can really get those two strokes pumping power but they are good at maximizing traction by putting minimal power to the ground at any given time Whereas this bike tends to put loads of power to the ground. Um, and uh, a little clutch work can help you out big time there. So you can definitely modulate the, the, the clutch on this a little bit and get smooth power to the ground when you really need to utilize as much traction as possible, but it has a tendency to really be a powerhouse of a bike that just wants to scream. And uh, I mean, obviously you can see right here, I'm going back down this ravine just fine with it. As I almost crashed, <laughs> friend and almost washed out there. That's second gear, and I utilize second gear a lot for minimizing my tire slip, but then there's sections like this, I'll shift it down the first, and it just motors right through there, no problem. So, needless to say, I'm really digging the change in sprocket size. Gearing helped out big time. Coming up on a very tight switch back. This was not it, but it's the next one. radius on this bike it's pretty legit too I was wrong it was not the next one it was this one back on this single track here this is some of the sketchiest around here Pretty much if you come to Idaho and you want to ride single track, you're going to see a lot of stuff like this where you're really facing the issue of falling off of a pretty steep 
hill that you won't be able to get your bike back up or you'll be actually free falling off of something. Definitely want to stay loose, especially in stuff like this. You want your bike to move, but you want your body to, to be the bike's compass. You want to be the north star for your bike. It needs to follow your lead. You want to go where you're, where you want the bike to go and be confident it's going to follow you there and uh, not try to force it. Don't squeeze onto it too tight. Open up your legs a little bit and let it move around because it's naturally going to do that. In this situation right here, it's really important to have that rear brake set up good. Because uh, on a four-stroke, you hit the rear brake at the wrong time, and it really can screw you up. You, uh, if you stall the bike up here, you can fall off the edge pretty easily, and that is not what you want. So. Yeah, set up that rear brake to where you're comfortable with it. take some pictures and head on back. Looks like the sun's getting low so as you can see it's not quite uh, the snow isn't quite melted and so if I go that direction I'll get pretty I'll be getting pretty high up in elevation and um, not only do I not have time for it it's 720 right now it's about a 20 minute 20 to 30 minute ride back to my truck so I'll be getting there right at uh, sunset anyways guys I hope you enjoyed this ride um, I hope the video was helpful I hope it was entertaining if you're here to just see some cool scenery and have a great day peace